What's up? My name is Rich. Welcome back to another video. In this video right here, I'm going to let you know all of the equipment that I use for my t-shirt business. All right. So, of course, I guess we can go ahead and start with the UniNet over there. Um, so that's a UniNet iColor 800 white toner printer. I use that mostly for like my generic t-shirt design orders. So mostly for like Etsy or Amazon. I don't like using it for a brand. Um, the actual print quality isn't actually like the greatest. I did a very detailed video on that. It's an hour long. Um, so if you're looking into purchasing a white toner printer, look into that video. It prints, it's consistent. I've had it for about a year now, I think. Um, or it might be like 11 months or so, but it may be a year. And um, I showed my prints and all that in the previous video, the review video. I use this thing all the time. I use it all the time, but I don't use it for the brand um, Only Ninjas. I don't use it for OnlyNinjas.com because the quality is just, it's okay, but it, it's enough to get by for a generic t-shirt design. But I wouldn't use it for a brand. The quality isn't the greatest. It definitely does not feel like screen printing. And even if you do the rasterization where you have a whole bunch of negative spacing, um, you can still feel it. It doesn't feel like screen printing. But if you're just doing like generic t-shirt prints, then it should work for you. But I use that a lot. I still use it a lot, even though with all those cons that I mentioned, the pro is that it runs consistently, needs no maintenance. I've had no maintenance with it. Every, every once in a while, there's this issue where it smears like the ink and I have to run like just white paper through it so it can like, I guess clean the rollers because if there's like ink that gets stuck on the rollers that's pretty much it so i have that for full color prints and then over there i have the vinyl cutter the graph tech ce6060 so i believe there's a newer model out now but this is the graph tech vinyl cutter um when i first started i had a us cutter vinyl cutter which is like around 400 bucks it's very similar to the specialist um which you can get over at uh heat press nation so um very similar to that that's what i started off with was a us cutter vinyl cutter which was like around 400 bucks i would definitely recommend one of those plotter style cutters in comparison to like a cameo or cricket or whatever but the thing is i've never had one of those so i can't really say for sure but just from my like speculation every time i see videos usually i just always see the pros with like one of the plotter ones except for when it comes to space i suppose um because the other one just sits on your your table so that's pretty nice to have as well if you're limited on space to begin with but i use this graph day cutter runs consistent had it for about maybe three years or so now um maybe even four i think three but runs great no issues whatsoever now let's get into heat presses um i started off with like uh this is just like a cheap generic heat press had a u.s cutter heat press that lasted me for over a year or two that lasted me for like a few years um if you guys haven't seen like way back when i don't know when i made a video but i actually gave it away to a local subscriber so i said i was giving it away somebody direct messaged me and i gave it to them i gave them the vinyl cutter and the heat press i haven't heard from them since i hope they're making good use of it um but yeah, I gave those items away. I did it in a video a long time from now. Um, now that I just think about it. But anyways, um, I have the Geonite 16x20 swing away. The DK20S. I've had that for about maybe like four four years or so. It's solid. I, I, I can say for sure it's, it's, it's over 50,000 presses to that thing. 50,000 uh, I'm more than sure there's there's just a way I know by numbers even though it doesn't have a counter I just know but it's solid that thing is solid I've actually had the little swinging plate to it where you can do like two shirts where you can load a shirt swing it over and take the other shirt off and the same thing but I think I installed it wrong and the rollers kept breaking so I ended up taking it off so in total I think I remember paying like close to three grand for that that heat press and that little rolling plate i still have the rolling plate laying around but it's actually the older edition um this heat press is like the older version of the dk20s so um if i remember when i installed it the instructions weren't very clear and now they have like a new version of the swing and the platen where you put the platen in it's a little different with the newer ones so i don't know why i mentioned that just figure i'll let you know in case you want to invest in that little swinging plate because it may be better now but i also have the dk uh 20 a the one that automatically pops up so that one's been great as well um i've had that one for i guess a year now um 
so i bought that one off facebook marketplace it was brand new when i got it well it, it looks like it was brand new but um i'm pretty sure it was but i've noticed like in the past there was a past video where i kept having issues with it um there's a screw missing and it was making it not completely tight so i was having issues with that i had to get a replacement screw for it and it's been working fine now so no issues with that besides that one screw and now i have the hotronics 16 by 20 man that 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 heat press i really like that heat press it just feels solid it just the way the way that one pops up it just feels like it it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. i mean at the end of the day all heat presses most heat presses does what it's supposed to but i like the 16 by 20 i also had a previous version which at the I think it was like a 15 by 15 or so because when I used to work in the garage in my old house I was a full-time dad so um, when my oldest was home from uh, summertime um, I had the smaller heat press for like when I was upstairs inside the house so it worked great it's more it is very mobile it's not too heavy it, it, it's easy to move around so that's why I had that heat press and then I got like the cheaper heat presses um, Mostly that is for like, you know, showcasing you guys there are cheaper heat presses that you can use to start off with. And um, it, it's, it's lasted. And I actually use it whenever we're like heavy in production and when we're doing like crazy Facebook ad sales days and I have like everybody here busy and we need like more than two, three heat presses. So we I actually use them and they they've worked great so far they're just a little more smaller um whenever you're like really getting into it especially if you're doing a lot of things i've noticed like when you pull it up if it's not like screwed to the table like since it's so light like the whole thing will pop up it just like starts wiggling around that's pretty much about it but so far they've worked haven't had any issues with it i'm, I'm talking about the craft pro and the waller press um so I know those have been sold out. I think the Waller Press are supposed to restock soon. So if you're looking for a heat press in an affordable price, I think um, I think I heard that they may be restocking soon. So I would go on their websites and type in notify me when available. So um, that's that for heat presses. Uh, for a hat press, I have the Geo Knight double hat press joint. Um, I used that for neck tag labels. So that's before I got the neck tag label platen. I'm pretty sure I feel like I've might have lost a lot of you all now might not know what I'm talking about anymore but anyways um <laughs> I used that for the neck tag label I also used uh the hot Tronis neck tag label but you can't do hoodies on it so I still have to use the hat press for it but um for that that's pretty much it for heat presses I've also had an older uh U.S. cutter heat hat heat press that I gave away I used to have a sawgrass sublimation printer I also gave that away um I was into, I did screen printing at one point. I had the Riley Hopkins from screenprinting.com, Ryonet. Uh, I thought it was the four x four. I might've mentioned it was a four x four previously, but uh, I saw a picture that I had on my computer. It was like the two x four. So had that. I also did direct to garment. I had the Omniprint 330TX, not a huge fan. Just prints too slow for me. Um, Maybe it prints faster now. I really don't know. But printing too slow and the maintenance was a pain for me. And what I hated most about it is like if something broke on it and I'm waiting on customer support to get in touch with them. So hopefully they fix that. And usually sometimes it'll take a day or even two days to get in touch with them and get the situation fixed. Sometimes even after that second day, they diagnose the problem, uh, figure out what part is missing. They have to mail it to me. It takes another two days. I just got a headache thinking about it. <laughs> so if I had to either go back to DTG or um, screen printing, I would probably do either or. I liked screen printing, but it was just, I don't really like printing in um, bulk. I find that to be a better game for you printing for somebody else. But um, when it comes to doing your own brand, I like outsourcing that. I like to get somebody else to do that for me. So that's the thing with that screen printing. Um, I, but I enjoyed that a little more than the directed garment. I wouldn't mind going back into directed garment, but it might have to be something a little quicker. Maybe like the GTX or something. Who knows? Maybe like a year from now, I might jump back into it, but really don't know right now. Um, for the most part, what I use is vinyl or the white toner. And whenever I see something popular selling a lot, I turn into pre-made transfers like Supercolor, 
transfer express fm expressions i know a lot of people have issues with fm expressions hold on so actually this isn't fm expressions this is 613 originals i haven't had any issues with it well I won't say I haven't had any issues with it. I have had issues with it. I know even like the box logo one um, of Only Ninjas, uh, you know, I've heard some people say it cracked and it peeled. But for the most part, I find it working out more than it does uh, not work. And it sucks even hearing that one or two shirts might mess up. But that's probably out of like 60 or 70 of those that sold the box logo ones. So one thing that um, I mentioned in the past, what I like to do is going back and doing that second press. Um, so I do that quite a bit. That's why I like that little feature with the 16 by 20 Hotronics where you can do two different times. You can do like a 15 second press. And once it comes up, it already knows the second press is like three or four seconds. So that's pretty cool with that Hotronics heat press. So if you've seen that video, that's why I like that heat press. But for the most part, I have issues with it, um, but just not uh, uh, an alarming amount, at least not for me. So that's a 613 Originals transfer. This shirt's been washed about six to seven times. So, um, you know, I do see the issues. Of course I see issues, people have issues. So I don't know, I haven't had too many issues with it. But uh, Super Color, Super Color works great. Super Color works great. It's just, I, but I'm glad I live in a time where that product is here, where I can just get it outsourced and get that type of product. So um, if I see a full color print doing well, I outsource it to Super Color. And you know, I have those transfers on hand. And now those are items that I use whenever I know a particular design is selling a lot. However, I still have to do the production. So if you want to skip this process and and you already know something's very popular and you don't even want to make it, you just go to your screen printer and you know, you get exactly what you want printed. So I like outsourcing. I like doing stuff myself. I like the fact that I know what i've been through so i know what i need whenever i need it but for the most part i think that's all of the equipment that i use right now pretty much just a white toner um the graphic vinyl cutter heat presses and uh, i may get a dye sublimation printer again just to you know just to, just to mess around with it because it does print very quickly presses very quickly no other type of work the only issues is like light colored shirts and the uh, uh, poly blend shirts and yeah mostly polyester shirts but poly blend shirts but i never did like a wash test on a poly blend myself personally so I i'm interested to see how well that works if a 50 50 shirt washes out good then i'm gonna start just selling light colored t-shirts and full color prints not not for the brand for like my generic t-shirt designs because i like black color shirts so for the brand, that's still going to be different. But when it comes to selling generic t-shirts online, I would love to find like a very, very, very easy way um, that I can do one-offs with. And I think that may be a solution, but I need I need to go back to the drawing table once again. Hopefully light color t-shirts, 50-50 with a uh, dye sublimation printer is going to be the one this time. Um, one other thing that's very important that I like to use I have a Dymo 4XL and I have a Rolo label printer. I have a MacBook Pro and I have an MSI laptop. Those are some other equipments that I enjoy very much because it's very nice to print out your own shipping labels. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything that I use for my online t-shirt business. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you comment, like, subscribe. See you next time. Hey, Hustle Ninja, thanks for watching. Remember, if you want to support the channel and have the chance to win a giveaway to help your clothing brand, be sure to check out OnlyNinjas.com. Also, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And stay hustling.